Depending on your seeding depth, field conditions, type of fertilizer being applied, and even coulter wear, you may wish to adjust your banding depth of the mid-row banders. The vertical adjustment of the mid-row bander can be accomplished quickly with the tools supplied. The individual adjustments of each mid-row bander allows all of the banders to be set so that they are placing fertilizer at the same depth regardless if a new or used coulter is installed on the opener. From new, your mid-row banders will be set at number 5. Increasing the operational depth will be necessary as the coulters wear. To adjust the MRB operating depth, loosen the lock nut on the vertical adjustment thread. Next, turn the depth adjustment rod using the deep socket adjustment tool supplied with your seating unit. The depth indicator on the side of the mid-row bander is numbered to show the incremental depth in inches. Once the bander depth has been set, secure the position by securing the nut on the depth adjustment rod. If the operating depth of the mid-row bander has been adjusted, particularly if setting the bander shallower, check the upper limit of the coulter arm stroke for possible interference between the disc and the frame. The upper limit of the disc travel can be adjusted to eliminate interference and will not affect the operating position of the mid-row bander, only the transport clearance of the coulter arm. Raise the mid-row banders to the full transport position and lock out the isolating ball valve. Loosen the lock nuts on the top and bottom of the mid-row bander top plate. Adjust the eye bolt, ensuring that there is adequate clearance between the coulter disc and the HSS tubing. When finished adjusting the transport position of the mid-row bander, be sure to retighten the two nuts on the eye bolt. As the coulter disc on the mid-row bander wears, it will become necessary to adjust the scraper and seed boot position. In order to ensure the proper operation of the scraper, we recommend that the scraper be kept between a quarter of an inch and three-eighths of an inch from the edge of the coulter face. Keeping this close to the edge will ensure that the edges of the coulter will not build up with material in wet or sticky soil conditions. When adjusting the scraper position, the scraper pressure must first be released. Using the spring adjustment tool provided, relieve the spring pressure so the scraper is loose on the shaft. Fine adjustments can be quickly accomplished by moving the plastic shims from the bottom of the scraper to the top. After the scraper position is set, return the spring pressure to the scraper using the supplied tool. If the amount of necessary adjustment is greater than what can be accomplished with the small plastic spacers, adjust the coarse scraper adjustment bracket. This can be done by loosening the two small bolts and sliding the scraper seed boot assembly up the mid-row bander arm. Secure the scraper arm assembly by retightening the bolts. Fine adjustments may still be necessary to optimize the scraper position to quarter of an inch to three-eighths of an inch distance from the coulter disc edge. After the scraper position is set, return the spring pressure to the scraper using the supplied tool. On the outside of the mid-row bander coulter disc, there is the spring closer tine. It is normal for this tine to collect some field residue during operation and use that residue to clean the outside of the coulter face. If the unit is operated in sandy soils, there may not be a need to clean the outside of the coulter disc. In these situations, the closer tine may be removed from the mid-row bander assembly. In many other soil conditions, this closer tine is very effective in ensuring that the coulter is running as clean as practical. From the factory, this closer tine is set at a 20 pound preload. If the soil being fertilized is more sticky than average, this cleaning pressure may be increased. To increase the spring pressure, simply tighten the eye bolt on the spring tine. Loosening the eye bolt will reduce the spring pressure. The 3310 Paralink Hodrill is equipped with a Borgo Air Seeder compatible auto clutch switch. This will allow the product distribution system on your Borgo air cart to be turned on at the same time as the opener direction is selected using the same switch. Some operators find it more convenient to turn the two systems on at the same time. For these operators, following these instructions will allow the two systems to be tied together. On the 3310 hitch frame near the front control block, you will find a small harness that will be connected to the air seater harness. The mating connection on the Borgo air seater harness will be located just behind the end of the hitch frame. 
Remove the cap from the air seater harness and tie in the 3310 frame harness. Tie both unused caps together to ensure that they do not get misplaced. In the event that you want to separate the controls from each other, simply reverse this procedure. When reversing the procedure, it is essential that the original cap be reinstalled on the air seater harness to ensure that a connection is made. Once the two systems are tied together, it is important to remember that when the 3310 control box is powered down, the connection to the air seater clutch will once again become active. This will ensure that seating can be continued if an electrical problem is encountered with the 3310 drill control box. This interconnection will be important to remember when transporting the unit down the road. Be sure to disengage the air seater clutch at the cab switch before disengaging the control box during transport.